So we have some pretty breaking news for the cannabis or 420 community that broke this weekend. Snoop Dogg has officially released a statement on what was formerly known as Twitter, the platform X, to his 50 million plus subscribers or followers that he is officially quitting that smoke and he's asking for people to respect him and his family's decision during this time. For me, as someone who struggled deeply with uh, marijuana or weed addiction and now as a person who's dedicated a large part of his life as an addiction recovery coach to helping other people quit who are struggling with weed addiction. This is a really big deal. In today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the reasons why Snoop Dogg might be quitting smoking. I'm going to look at various factors as to why this is going to be challenging for him. And then I'm going to talk about some things that he can expect to face as someone who's been smoking weed for a majority of his life. If you wind up enjoying the content in today's video or you yourself are looking to quit smoking, be sure to check out the pinned comment or the video description to learn more about our addiction mindset recovery coaching free and paid resources. So the first reason that Snoop Dogg might be quitting that smoke might be as simple as it's a promo for something else, but I actually think this is very, very, very on unlikely. Uh, of course, he's referenced smoke specifically. So that leaves out products that are edible, that leaves out vaping products. And knowing that Snoop Dogg has a pretty big hand in cannabis business and the space that he's in regarding cannabis and the NFT space, this could just be a promo for launching a THC edible or a THC vape product. And you know, his goal was to get people's attention with a tweet or a post like this, which he's certainly accomplished that. And I wouldn't put that past Snoop Dogg because despite the fact that this guy smokes a hella amount of weed, you know, he even has his own like blunt roller, I think that he employed at one point throughout his life. He is a genius when it comes to marketing and he is a pretty big uh, genius when it comes to running business and promotion, right? He's in the entertainment industry. He understands promotion. So it's a big possibility. Another yeah. reason that he might be quitting that smoke or might be quitting cannabis in general at his age, around the age of 52, it could be related to two possibilities. One is health concerns. And we'll talk about the different health concerns he might be facing. Possibility number two is for personal development reasons. And I'm going to explain what that means as far as becoming a grandfather and a father in a moment. Let's look at the possible health complications though first. So it's normally when a person hits somewhere between the age of 40 and 50, 40 being the more common age, that a people's going to reassess smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, smoking weed, because this is where they're really starting to feel a lot of the physical and psychological impacts of their uh, weed or drug consumption. Problem number one that he might be facing is something called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. This is a syndrome that people who smoke a lot of weed may experience and involves like excessive amounts of vomiting and involves weight loss. Snoop is a pretty skinny guy, always been a skinny guy though, so I'm not implying that that's what's happening to him, but it could involve extreme weight loss. It could involve nausea. It could involve an inability to eat food without getting stoned or you feel nauseous. It can CHS. It can manifest as extreme muscle pain only relieved by hot showers, and it often results in ER visits for people and things like that. Now, that's one possibility for Snoop Dogg. He might be suffering the early stages of something like cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. Even if he's not vomiting, he could be in that prodromal phase, and you know he's a rich guy. He probably has access to good health care. He might have been informed of this recently. It's very possible. Problem number two is pulmonary and lung and cardiac issues. Again, this is typically the age where you would see that. Things like emphysema, COPD, or other inflammatory or harmful lung diseases are a real possibility for him. Now, a lot of people are going to say like, dude, no, smoking doesn't cause lung cancer. Smoking doesn't cause COPD. Weed doesn't do that. Actually, weed has about two times the amount of tar as your traditional cigarette tobacco products, okay? And that's important because a lot of people who smoke weed 
don't smoke the quantity of weed and the form of like blunts and, and dry herb that Snoop Dogg does. So when you're chain smoking weed all day long, now you're getting two times the amount of tire that someone that smokes cigarettes. Typically, we weren't seeing these problems in people who smoke weed in the past because they weren't consuming the high quantities that someone like Snoop Dogg was consuming or that even your average user today consumes, right? It's very common that we work with people at our offices who smoke weed in the same manner that you would smoke a pack of cigarettes, and they are experiencing pulmonary and cardiac issues. So that's a really big possibility. And then the last possibility from a health standpoint could be a psychological or a mental health issue that Snoop Dogg is facing. I remember during the elections, and I really have no input on politics. I could care less about politics. But I remember Snoop Dogg's very firm stance on um, you know, his political views. And I remember some of his behaviors revolving around it. And personally, I saw it as a bit psychotic for someone who was a businessman, someone who's an entrepreneur, someone who, although, yeah, he smokes, he raps, he, he already has kind of a rough reputation. I just thought that was weird from a business standpoint. But then again, I'm not in his business. I don't run his business. I don't know his audience the same way he does. So maybe that's a far stretch. But I did think there was a point where his behavior seemed a bit psychotic to me. And uh, I, I don't know, like, I, maybe he's going through some mental health stuff right now. And maybe he's determined that the weed isn't the best thing for him. You know, it's interesting. He made a follow up post a few days after his original one saying like, it was just a photo of him. And it said, you know, that natural high or high on life or something like that, which to me would imply that there's a mental health component that, to this, which there usually is when you're facing like addiction, right? Because that's what we're probably talking about. There's a third reason why he could be quitting, and this is actually what I personally think is going on in this situation, and I think it's for like he's at that age, he's a father, and he's recently become a grandfather, or he's taken on that role of grandfatherhood, and I want to point out two, two things here, okay, because this is a very common reason for people to quit around this age. Back in 2002, Snoop Dogg, it was on the uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live, he announced that he uh, was quitting smoking and drinking, and he attributed it to his desire to be a more responsible father, which I think makes sense because I think it's very, very, very hard to be a fully responsible father when you're consuming a lot of alcohol and consuming a lot of cannabis. Uh, I work with a lot of young people who are from, uh, they tend to be, I'll, I'll just be blunt, they tend to be in a population that's immigrant based, African American, or very low income, that's Caucasian communities. I work in our schools, I work in our high schools, and a lot of these kids are very, very negatively impacted by their parents' excessive alcohol and cannabis use. So I think that makes a lot of sense that Snoop Dogg, even someone of affluence, was looking to quit for those reasons. Fast forward though to, to 2023, okay? Uh, pretty earlier in the year, okay, Snoop Dogg, he told the Daily Mail and he hinted that becoming a grandfather may have changed him in several ways. And here, the, listen to this. The main way is being concerned with how I live, how I move, the kind of people I'm associated with, because I want to see my grandkids grow old, he said. The only way I can do that is to take precautionary steps as far as how I move, who I hang out with, where I go out, and my intake. That's interesting. My intake. Are we referencing weed and alcohol with that? I just don't want to do this to my body anymore. I want to survive. And this is pretty interesting because this to me sounds like someone who is struggling with addiction. I don't want to be doing this anymore. I feel like I'm dying inside. I want to survive because I have so much to live for. And this to me, maybe I'm looking too far into it, but I really don't think I am at all. This this to me is I'm struggling. I want to be around for my family. I want to be around for my grandkids. And I have to start to reassess my decisions in life. I actually feel bad for Snoop Dogg, even though I help people quit weed and he's probably one of the most 
pro cannabis influencers out there, I feel bad for him because he has tied so much of his image and his finances into the cannabis industry. It's going to be very, very hard to back away from that. He's going to have a lot of social pressure. He's probably going to have a lot of financial pressure, and he's going to have a lot of actually kickback from the pro cannabis community if this is the direction that he's going on things. And I feel bad when that's tied into business stuff. You know, it's fascinating because I, I tell people, when you, if you ever get online, think long and hard what it is you want to get involved with and the types of things you want to promote because you might change your mind one day on those things. Uh, if we look at someone like Jacob Jones, who I think has become the new face of Philip Morris and Alteria Cigarette Companies, right? He just promotes smoking heavily. He's a younger guy. He's having a massive influence on that younger generation. If we look at even to an extent Tucker Carlson and his promotional campaign of products like Zen and the influence that that's having. If we look at a situation like Outlaw Dip, who is a big chewing tobacco, was a big chewing tobacco channel. This guy used to make products, chewing tobacco products. They contained nicotine. And then he decided to quit nicotine at one point. And he released a video about this on why he was quitting, why he didn't want to promote that anymore. I mean, it's really hard to break away from that image, especially once you've tied it into your image and your personality and your business when you change your mind later on down the line. And I think this is a struggle that Snoop Dogg may be looking to face. But on a positive note, he is facing some some big support. You know, I think Meek Mill reached out on uh, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, and said, hey, I'm going to Dubai. I actually look, I'm, I'm looking at quitting myself for various reasons revolving around self-improvement and just wanting a better quality of life. You had a lot of people actually reaching out saying the same thing. We now, could look at this and say, okay, what is it that Snoop Dogg should expect going forward? He's probably going to go through some withdrawal symptoms, right? Uh, it was in 2020 or 2022, the Journal of the American Medical Association looked at 23,000 people who consumed cannabis and 43% of them experienced withdrawal symptoms, physical withdrawal symptoms and psychological withdrawal symptoms related to quitting cannabis, insomnia, muscle aches, body aches, headache, cravings being a really big one, uh, mood changes, changes in appetite, stomach problems, bowel pattern changes, all things that we see, irritability, all things that we see with your traditional substance use withdrawal symptoms, all of these things people see related to cannabis. Um, I think if Snoop Dogg is actually quitting THC altogether, he probably is going to have a little bit of a hard time just because of the the quantity and the amount of years that he's been smoking, but it's not impossible. We see people in our programs. We have people right here on our channel who have struggled with cannabis use for decades who have successfully quit and improved their quality of life. Now, I got to plug my own channel. I got to plug my own stuff here. If you need help quitting, be sure to check out the pinned comment. We offer coaching programs for people. And if I were Snoop Dogg, I would pick out a bottle of our product, Crave Less Chewing Gum. You got 90 pieces of chewing gum in here. It contains KSM-66 ashwagandha and N-acetylcysteine. KSM-66 ashwagandha is an herb that's been clinically shown to reduce stress and anxiety, something that I would have liked when I was quitting smoking weed. And then we threw in there N-acetylcysteine, something that in early research seems to have a positive impact on dampening that craving and that impulsive, obsessive behavior to use a substance. So we took those two ingredients, we're the first people in the world to do it, and we put them into a chewing gum product, which all help, also helps to satisfy that oral fixation and those oral cravings. It makes for better absorption of the ingredients. You can't find something like this on Amazon or in your local health food store. You can buy it right here through, uh, through YouTube, or you can check out the links in the pinned comment to learn more on our Shopify website. All right, guys, download our free seven-step guide to quit smoking weed if you want nothing to do with this, or just follow me into the next video. And Snoop, if you're watching this, pick up my product and then follow me into the next video where I'm going to talk a little bit about the mindset to get through the withdrawal symptoms. I wonder if you're watching my channel right now. I hope you are. I'd love to be in touch if that's the case.